September. Load up the truck, grab some good friends. Hi, I'm Bob Ross. <laughs> Head west and stake your claim in the mountains. All right, well, it's 10, 11 here on night one. Got to camp slightly more organized for two guys. Ah, the first morning, filled with beautiful views and elk bugles everywhere. Well, maybe it's not quite that easy. First, you have to climb out of your toasty warm sleeping bag, have some breakfast, and do your last minute prep. All right, boys, it's about a little after 4.30. How's it going in here? <laughs> Tropical embalming. <laughs> I guess we don't even know the temperature yet, do we? No, I have to guess like low 20s. Yeah, my water's frozen, so. We got, uh, you know, it's September. <laughs> so I forgot my uh, actual scraper back in the garage. I haven't winterized the Jeep yet, so. The bell is card it is. <laughs> well, you don't get any points for that. So. Once you reach your hunting spot, you start hiking in. Then a little more hiking, a little more, and a little more. Now at this point, you may be saying, well, that doesn't look too bad, and you would be right. Except no morning hike is complete without a little schwacking. Schwacking, short for bushwhacking, is a term we are all too familiar with. We use the term pretty broadly for anything that adds a little fun to the hunt. Thick brush, never ending downfalls, creeks, beaver dams. Mountains that are a little too steep. All kinds of stuff that is pretty much unavoidable. Unfortunately, due to how nasty it can get, the real bad stuff never makes it onto film due to needing both hands. Me and my buddy Mitch experienced one of those days that seemed to never end on our 2022 trip after having literally all of the above thrown at us on our first day of the hunt, only to get to the end and realize we are going to have to wade through waist high beaver swamp for hundreds of yards in order to get back to our truck. Well, Mitchell, uh, what are you doing? Getting all the electronics in the dry bag. And why are we doing that? Looks like we got a bit of a uh, marsh we have to cross if we want to get back to the truck. You could get frustrated about the route that you chose, but you know the summit or ridge top is getting closer with each step. And for us, that usually means snack time. Taking a breather, got the socks off, feet up, sandwiches, wraps, wraps, everything you could ever imagine. And with snack time on the peak, you have now earned your views. As you recoup from the morning, wait for the fog to lift, and the thermals to switch so you can finally dive into that dark green timber you have been targeting. The next step is ripping bugles into the dark green timber. And hoping for a response. With no response, you have a couple of options. You can stay put in glass, or your best bet is to get back to hiking. You want to pound in further until you reach an area where your bugle didn't reach and repeat the process. This can easily turn into many miles and thousands of feet of elevation, but you know at any given moment the hillside could light up. In the meantime, you can just be happy with whatever the mountain gives you.
Seeing any wildlife is exciting, but aside from seeing an elk, I think everyone's second favorite is grouse. These are basically free chickens running around the mountains and they are fair game. They can turn any long day into a great hunting story. That is, if you can hit them. If you get enough attempts and have enough arrows, you will certainly connect. Roasted. Go get him, go get him, go get him. Grouse tastes excellent with nothing more than a little salt and pepper, fried in butter. But on days when your morning hunt ends a little early and you have a little extra time at camp to regroup before the evening hunt, it is fun to get creative, in this case, breaded with crushed up potato chips and Ritz crackers. Mm. Okay, with your belly full of grouse, it's time to bomb back into the mountains. You know what comes next? A little more hiking. And calling. Pushing deeper and deeper into the belly of the beast. until you finally get a response. And just like that, it's go time. Everything you have studied, researched, and planned comes flooding into your brain all with a massive adrenaline spike. How far away is he? Where is he on the map? What is the terrain between him and us? What's the prevailing wind doing? What are the thermals doing? And how can we use them to our advantage? Will they switch by the time we get to him? Is the shade, terrain, or anything else causing the wind to be different by him? Is he moving towards us? And if so, how fast? Is he with a herd or alone? You and your buddy have minutes to answer all these questions and make a plan before this massive animal loses interest or gets your wind. Now it's time to move in as quickly and as quietly as possible. Two things that do not go well together. When you get close enough that the bull's bugles are so loud that they shake you to your core, it is time to set up. I find my best shooting lanes, check my ranges, and get ready for an 800 pound pissed off bull to come charging in at me. Simultaneously, my buddy Mitch drops downwind another 60 or so yards for me to call. The idea here is that the bull doesn't know I'm there. He is only aware of Mitch, who is about to start calling to him. A fired up bull should come charging towards Mitch's calls, and before he ever gets there, hopefully I can sneak an arrow into him without him ever knowing I was there. I sit silently, trying to remember all the landmarks I have ranged, and get ready for anything, while Mitch tries to call him in.
until the wind finally betrays us and it's over. Well, we just got done with morning number five's first opportunity. First through sixth opportunity. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> there's at least five different <laughs> There's been people at all in the last hour. We've been surrounded by six bulls yeah. for over an hour just within 200 yards. I mean, some of them seemed like they were like, couldn't have been much more than 100 yards away. There was one right here and I was raking a tree. Really? I thought it was going to come right through here. Yeah, I was up there raking. I could hear you. Yeah. Um, I, I was like shaking for like over an hour. Yeah. Like, I put two of them to bed yeah. in the Timber. I figured those would be good ones to go in. We were in there yesterday. There's two bowls in there yesterday yeah. again today. Yeah. Days like this are unforgettable. However, there are many days I will never forget for different reasons. When the steep mountains turn into slick grease, it always makes for an adventure of a day. <laughs> we're just chilling here at L Camp and raining. <laughs> Everything's pretty wet. We just had to prove that never rains in Idaho in September. The rain just doesn't want to quit today, Ben, does it? No. The roads are a little bit too much even for the Raptor. The Raptor uh, tapped out when we saw this road coming up. Just can't imagine uh, going down that in controlled fashion. <laughs> it does make me want some chocolate milk, though. Oh, yum. The rain's supposed to top by 7.30 this morning, right? It's 2 30 in the afternoon. It doesn't rain in September in Idaho. No. Yeah. Yes. No one's out there. It's just a heavy mist. It's a heavy mist. <laughs> Clearing right up. You do what you can to make the most of it and hope for better weather tomorrow. Sometimes, only to be left wishing you had that rain. Well, we're on our way back from our morning hunt on day four here, and it was actually a good day, but I can tell you one thing I'm getting real sick of this hot, hot weather. It's not really fun hiking up bald mountainsides in 97 degree weather. I bet it's even hotter than the top of those mountains. Could be. I don't know. Tell you the way it feels when you're on the uh, open hillside in the sun. It's brutal. It's brutal. You never know what kind of hand you'll be dealt each day in the mountains. You might wake up to freezing temps to later that day be finding ways to get over heat related illness. Other days you may be eight miles into your prime hunting spot only to be overrun with free range sheep and sheep herders moving through the mountainside. That day, you curse them for ruining your hunt, only to turn around and help them the next. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Party. Thank you so much. Si. Sí. Thank uh, you so much. Mi nombre es uh, Misael. Oh, Misael. 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 Yeah. Thank you so much. Dios es grande. Uh, yeah, de, de nada. Este? De nada, amigo. Yeah. No hay nada. Yeah, dos guys. I see. Especially if you're a guy like my buddy Mitch, who always stops to help someone in need. Alright, I'm on mine. Don't drop it in the water. <laughs> At the end of each day, no matter how good or how bad it was, you can rest easy 
knowing you literally gave it everything you had. You may not have put an elk down, but there is hot food at camp and good stories to be shared. We're gonna get a picture of this. Like you bet, on it. Not to mention, there's always tomorrow. If you keep your head in the game and have a little luck on your side, eventually, everything will come together. We got some meat for the freezer. Two days left, boys. Let's go. Let's go. We just heard screaming from across the valley of celebrations. We no longer hear the bull. So, we're thinking he got him. We're just checking in on top of the world here. Storm's brewing. Still hiking up to Mitch. We're almost there, buddy. Well, the backup is here. You might be able to tell how steep it is by uh, how far away these guys are. Strap up. Backs up. Oh. This is only have like a thousand more feet of this. It's not too bad. And like some deadfalls to climb over when you're packing an elk out on your back. Feels good. Feels good though. The sweetest pain oh, a man can gain. I'm happy. I'm, I'm stoked right now. Ben's happy as a lark. With every muscle in our bodies burning, you couldn't wipe the smile off of anyone in this group's face if you tried. With days of hard work and many months planning, one man's well-placed arrow completes a task that we have all thought about the entire year. <laughs> Whether you leave the mountains with meat or not, you are guaranteed lifelong memories, good times with good friends, and hopes that you can make it back again next year.